Even though it looked like a simple wooden frame, the torture rack was probably the most cruel tool used in the Middle Ages, and it was still being used in the 17th century. People used to think that rack torture was used in ancient times, but now most people think it was used in the Middle Ages. At a time when executioners came up with creative but cruel ways to kill people, this gadget stood out from the rest. The device was a wooden frame on which a victim was put with their arms and legs tied to a roller on each end. It was used to stretch out victims until their muscles popped or were made useless. But despite what most people think, rack torture didn't end in the 1400s. In fact, it was used in different ways in different parts of the world. It is said to have been used in Britain until the 17th century. How the Rack Torture Device Worked The rack was a torture device that looked like a bed at first glance. It had a horizontal frame that was just a little bit off the ground. But when I looked more closely, I saw a much darker design. The victim's wrists and legs were chained to rollers at each end of the rack. Once the subject was strapped in, his or her body was often stretched at a snail's pace to put more pressure on the shoulders, arms, legs, back, and hips. In the end, the person in charge of the execution could choose to stretch the limbs until the joints started to pop and finally became permanently loose. Even muscles were pulled so far that they could no longer work. The device was also used to hold people in place so that they could be hurt in other ways. People who were tortured on a rack could have their nails pulled out, be burned with hot candles, or even have pins driven into their spines. Those who were tortured on a rack were often lucky to live, and the few who did were left unable to move their arms or legs for the rest of their lives. Origins and Famous Uses of the Sinister Tool Historians think that the earliest form of the tool came from ancient Greece. Herostratus was a notorious arsonist who burned down the second temple of Artemis in the 4th century BCE. He was beaten to death on the rack, which became a part of history. Historians have also said that the Greeks probably used the rack to torture slaves and people who were not Greek. Ancient Roman writer Tacitus also told a story about how Emperor Nero tried in vain to get information from a woman named Epicarus by putting her on the rack. Nero's methods did not work, though, because Epicarus chose to kill herself rather than tell him anything. John Holland, the second Duke of Exeter, brought the rack to England in 1420. This is how scholars know it today. The Duke, who was the constable of the Tower of London, was known for using it to punish women, which gave it the nickname, the Duke of Exeter's Daughter. The Duke is known to have used the device on the Catholic victim Nicholas Owen and the Protestant Saint Anne Askew. People say that Askew was so stretched out that she had to be dragged to her death. Even Guy Fawkes, who was involved in the infamous gunpowder plot of November 5th, was said to have been tortured on a rack. But William Wallace, the Scottish rebel who inspired Mel Gibson's movie Braveheart, is said to have been killed by this device. Wallace did have a particularly horrible death. After being stretched, his genitalia were burned in front of him, and he was disemboweled in front of a crowd. The Spanish Inquisition, a Catholic group that tried to turn everyone in Europe and its colonies to Catholicism by force, was the most famous group to use the rack. In fact, Torquemada, who was known for torturing people during the Spanish Inquisition, liked to use a potoro, which is a stretching rack. Retiring the device in the modern era. Whether or not the device was used in the 17th century is still up for debate. However, it is said that in 1697 Britain, a silversmith who was accused of murder was faced with rack torture. A modified form of the tool used to hang people vertically was also used in Russia in the 18th century. There's no doubt that the rack was a very cruel way to torture people. Given that the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States forbids cruel and unusual punishment, it's not surprising that this form of torture didn't make it to the colonies, even though other forms of punishment did, such as the pillories, which were made of wood and had holes for the head and hands. As part of the Treason Act, which was passed in 1708, Britain made it illegal to harm people. What might be surprising is that the penalty itself wasn't illegal everywhere until 1984, when the United Nations held a convention against torture and other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. At that time, all participating states agreed that they would not do other acts of cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment that do not amount to torture as defined in Article 1 
when such acts are done by, at the behest of, or with, the consent or acquiescence of a public official or other person acting in an official capacity. So even though the rack wasn't specifically mentioned in that meeting, it's possible that a creatively horrifying torture method like this was in mind. We hope you liked this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about civilization or time period we should talk about. Also watch another video here.